Okay, you've been asking for videos on polars, so here we have it, the Battle of the Bears, pandas versus polars. I'm gonna start this video with an introduction to polars. I'm gonna assume you've got some familiarity with pandas already. I'll talk about some of the differences, show the syntax, and you'll wanna stick around till the end of the video because I'm gonna do a benchmark. So some of the high level differences with polars and pandas. Polars is written completely internally in Rust. Very high speed, very able to deal with threats. So while pandas is single threaded, polars is multi-threaded and is going to use a lot of the power that your computer has that pandas would leave on the table. Another thing that I really like about polars is it doesn't have that row index. It doesn't do all this weird row indexing sort of thing that pandas done. And honestly, the row indexing in pandas, usually I'm having to circumvent it rather than benefiting from it. What's been your experience with the pandas indexing? Let me know in the comments. Is this completely severs from pandas? This is a whole new direction built from the ground up to be fast. Polars is both eager and lazy. And lazy just means that when you issue a command, it's not necessarily executed immediately. What's good about that is polars can batch up a bunch of your commands and then figure out how to execute that in the fastest possible way. So you can run the individual pieces of this eager so that they're executed immediately. The first little cell that I have here, we basically just read in a CSV file. And you'll see that I am reading a CSV file across the wire. So this is just a Iris data set that I have out on my data repository. Here I am doing this eager. And eager, you can pull from a URL. Lazy, at least currently, you cannot. I get an error when I try to do this lazily. So here's the head, and you're just seeing the, the typical Iris data set. The queries are a little bit different. You're not really using that masking concept that you have in pandas, which honestly, I never like. What do you think of the way that pandas does the mask, where you've got True, false, 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 true, but like for every single row in the entire thing. And then you pass that whole thing back in as the array index. But let me know in the comments, what do you think of the, of the pandas masks? Here what's happening is we're using a filter. You pass in the filter, and this is going to filter the data frame back. So we're filtering on species. If it's equal to Iris virginica, we bring it back. So only Iris virginica. If you want to select specific columns, and if you could see here, this is the chaining or the builder pattern, I believe it's called sometimes, that Polars uses a lot. You have the data frame dot filter dot select dot head. You just keep chaining them on. And if this was lazy, all of those calls would not be executing until you call collect at the end. This is an interesting thing that I ran into with Polars. If I run it, it pulls them in, but I had to put this infer schema length in there. I've never had a problem with this data set in Pandas, but if I run it just like this, it explodes. And it basically says, can't parse this number into a integer. So it, it sampled some part of the data frame, thought that that was an integer column, but then it didn't sample far enough and it's actually floating point. Multiple ways to solve that. One is to put in the length in here. This is not the really good way to do it because as I know from production systems, you put 200 in here, I guarantee you the users are gonna either drop this to 190 or put 201 in there and that, that breaks it. This is the more glorious way to do it, more robust. I'm specifying my data types ahead of time so that I don't need any sort of infer length. And this, this works about the same. Now we've specified the types and you use the PL, the polar types for each of these, and this is just a map showing you how to put those all in. Missing values. This is where you start to modify things. So there are some missing values in this data set for horsepower. This is another difference between polars and pandas. 
polars, everything is going to come back as this null value, whereas missing values are represented in multiple different ways in pandas, depending on what type of a column it is. Here, what we're doing is I read in the data frame, just like before, again, we're doing eager, and we're going to filter it just showing the columns. So here we are pulling in all of the rows that have a null value in horsepower. And you can see as evident by that. We're going to read in the, the median here embedded in there, and we're going to replace all of the null values with the median and display the head of that. And then we're gonna filter and find only those that are null which is none if I've done my thing right. Modifying columns. This is an area where pandas gets a little bit messy because you're trying to sometimes modify a slice that you've made. That just leads into really convoluted warnings that pandas gives you. This is, this is the thing that trips up my students the most when they first start using pandas. But here we're reading in the miles per gallon data set, just like before. And I am going to convert the weight from pounds into kilograms. So here we print out the conversion that I made. And you can see I have modified the weight. Notice I do DF equals because I'm reassigning that weight to the data frame. I also replaced the column in place, which is how you modify a column. If you wanna add a column, we can do kind of the same thing. We're using that same width column. That's your real workhorse for modifying it. We used with column up here. And what it does is now I am taking the weight column. I am applying that same lambda function to convert to metric, I hope. And then I am aliasing it to weight kilogram. So now weight kilogram is here. So you've got the original weight and you've got the weight in kilograms. This is group by. I have to admit, I like this a whole lot better than pandas. Pandas would always return kind of this group by object that is just weird. You've got multi-level indexes all over the place. I always have to just flatten the thing so that I can actually make any use from it. And maybe I just don't know how to use pandas group bys really well. But let me know, what do you think of the way pandas does group bys, where you've got that complex group by object and multi-level layer uh, indexes and all that stuff? Let me know in the comments. This group by just looks so incredibly clean to me. I'm not re-indexing anything, it's, it's just nice. I read in the iris data set and I am going to group by on the species and I'm going to aggregate on each of those four measures and put in the means. And when you run that, you've got a nice flat data set where I could just go in and see, okay, Satosa, those are the mean. So is this helpful? Uh, if so, smash the like button, maybe subscribe to the channel and click the bell. Sort, this is pretty simple as well. I sort the data set and again, it, re it returns a sorted data set and I assign it back to the original data frame. And I do reverse it so that the higher miles per gallon comes first. Lazy, okay, let's look at the lazy mode for this. Here I am reading the CSV and I immediately detach it with lazy. Now nothing's going to execute until we do a collect. And if you don't do a collect, it's just gonna give you kind of the explain plan of how it's planning on doing it. And you can use this to help optimize. So now I'm grouping by just like before, and I'm gonna sort it on the species. So I've got several things going on. I've got the group by, I've got the aggregation, and I've got the species all linked together. If you want to see actually the result, you've gotta put that collect on there, and then you get the same thing. You can also suck the read entirely into it, but like I said, when you put the, the, the read, the scan CSV into there, you can't pull it across the wire anymore. I'm guessing this is because of some sort of parallelization that they may want to build in there, maybe even across machine. I, here I read in the iris file that I just downloaded, and I do the same group by, I batch all of this together, and this collect is finally when the whole thing happens that lets it optimize and then run. Okay, let's benchmark it. We're gonna load this benchmark one file. This is one billion rows. It is a 10 gigabyte parquet file. I already loaded it into pandas. Let's do a group by on it. While pandas is running, notice the CPU. It's at like 16, 19 or so-ish percent. It's really not pushing the CPU. You'll notice a difference when you see 
pullers. And by the way, while that's running, the machine type you can see here, 24 core, so considerable threads that you could use. Memory is 128 gigabyte, currently at about 65%. If I do more than a billion rows, the overhead of loading it causes me to run out of memory. And Pandas is done at 21 seconds, plus or minus 440 milliseconds. Let's run Polars. I am restarting the kernel. Okay, so now let's run Polars. This is with 1 billion rows, just like what Pandas did. Look at that. 1.31 seconds versus 21 seconds. That's truly amazing. Let's try one more. Let's be mean. Now I'm going to be really mean. I am going to make Polars do twice what Pandas did. It's going to have 2 billion rows. That doesn't even fit into Pandas. The overhead blows it up on this machine. Okay, 2 billion rows loaded. You can tell the memory is at 87%. Let's just copy this down here and run it. I forgot to mention it before, but let's watch the CPU over here when it runs. So Polars is running. Notice the CPU is pegged at 53, 73, 65%. A lot more CPU utilization than we saw with Pandas. And we're done. 2 billion rows, twice as much as Pandas, and we are at 3.92 seconds, plus or minus 2.49. So a little more variance there, but still considerably below the Panda score, even with twice the amount of data. This is really interesting. Thank you for watching this video. Are you interested in Polars? Let me know in the comments. I would be glad to do more videos on this. Please give it a like. I'm really pretty interested in this. And make sure to subscribe to the channel so you do not miss anything.